This is just me talking. <laughs> Who do you want to hear <laughs> first? Who do you want to hear first? Honestly, you can do a really good Monica voice. Not gonna lie. That's because I don't really do much with Monica. I make her sound more proper. Because she kind of is. Let's do Monica then. Hi, Gantator. How's the writing going? All right, I guess. I'll take that. As long as it's not going bad. I'm happy that you're applying yourself. Maybe soon you'll come up with a masterpiece. <laughs> I wouldn't count on that. You never know. You want to share what you wrote today for today? Sure, here you go. Give my poem to Monica. All right, this one's good. It feels like you're not getting more com- It feels like you're not only getting more comfortable with your style, but the imagery is better than the last one I read. Just wondering, but have you been finding inspiration in Yuri's writing style? Hmm, I guess so. Can't deny that she's talented. Yeah, totally. I think her poems are the most romantic. That's the best way to describe it. She's like a totally different person when she picks up a pen. I noticed that too. Or when she's talking about literature, like a light turns on inside her. Mm hmm. Sadly, it's hard to get much personal conversation out of her. Trust me, I've tried. Who knows what's going on in that head of hers? I hope you don't mean that in a bad way. No, of course not. I just meant that I wish she didn't keep so much to herself. But still, defending her like that. You must be pretty into her. Ah! You completely misunderstood. No, no she didn't. <laughs> Calm down, I'm kidding. Besides, I'm pretty sure she's already got a boyfriend. Wait, really? Uh, yeah, a fictional one anyway. Monica kind of whispers that last part to me. It's just a hunch, but... Well, there's not really anything wrong with that. I mean, people have fucking waifus all the time. Yeah, pretty much. Apparently there's this new Husbando thing going on now. Husbando's been around for a while. Then there's me who's asexual and I'm like... And aromantic and I'm just like, I... I don't understand the waifu Husbando. I don't want to marry any of these people. I just like them. Pure desperation and loneliness. That's what that <laughs> all is. A lot of fucking neats. Oh, well, I know. I was just saying. But anyway, you want to read my poem now? I like the way this one turned out, so I hope you do too. Alright, let's take a look. Save me. The colors, they won't stop. Bright, beautiful colors. Flashing, expanding, piercing. Red, green, blue. An endless cacophony of meaningless noise. The noise, it won't stop. Violent, grating waveforms. Speaking, screeching, piercing. Sine, cosine, tangent. Like playing a chalkboard on a turntable. Like playing a vinyl on a pizza crust. An endless poem of meaninglessness. Meaningless. Load me. You're not a- you're not- you're not a washing machine. I can't load you. Hmm. It's even more abstract than your last one, huh? It is not a pleasant poem. No, it's not. It's a very unhappy poem. <laughs> I guess it's just the way I write. I'm sorry if you don't like it. No, I never said that. It's just... Just the kind of thing I've never really seen before, I guess. I've kind of like... I kind of like playing with my space on the paper. Choosing where and how to space your words can totally change the meaning, the mood of a poem. I have a book where, like, the text gets really chaotic and fucking weird. A lot of yep, people. So do I. House of Leaves. And I just remember the last name is Daniel Oski. I cannot remember the guy's first name. I'd recommend it. It's a good book. It's just really, like, structurally really fucking weird. Or it gets really fucking weird. It's almost like magic. The way I wrote the wrote the lines really short makes it feel like they're trying to speak over the noise. I see. Still hard for me to tell what it's about though. Uh, not happy things. Depression, obviously. Or ADHD. Why not both? Yeah. B double is fucked up. Oh my god. <laughs> 
sometimes asking what a poem is about isn't the right question. A poem can be as, be as abstract as a physical expression of a feeling, or a conversation with the reader. So putting it that way, not every poem is about something. Anyway, here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Oh my god, I'm actually learning something from a 2D character on a video game. <laughs> here's some advice you didn't ask for. Fucking, the fucking Rotom Pokedex in Sun and Moon. At least in the Ultra ones, I don't remember if he's that annoying in the original ones, but holy shit. He doesn't huh. shut up. And then you can't use the map until he shuts up. Ugh. Sometimes you'll find yourself facing a difficult decision. When that happens, don't forget to save your game. Break the fourth wall. You never know when you might change your mind. Or when something unexpected may happen. What? She is not wrong. Yeah. Wait, is this a tip even about writing? What am I even talking about? That's my advice for today. I feel like she knows she's a video game character. Yeah, thanks for listening. Now we only have Sayori. <laughs> oh! I like this one, Tater. It has a nice feeling to in it. Ah, I'm glad. Does that mean it's better than yesterday's? Hmm, let me think. I don't know. I guess I like both of them. <laughs> That's not very helpful, you know. Well, I'm not very good at figuring out if poems are good or bad. But that's just what I... I... Bleh. But that's why I just go by my heart. If it makes me feel things, then it must be a good poem. I'm not sure yeah. exactly how that works. Then again, I guess conveying feelings is a pretty important part of the whole thing. Or telling a story. It doesn't have to be all about feelings. Or maybe telling a story about feelings. Yeah, that too. I don't know if the Ballad of Reading Gull or the Harlot House would equate to that. The Harlot House probably would. That's by Oscar Wilde, if you want to read it. Oscar Wilde is fantastic and hardly anybody knows who he is. Yeah, maybe. Honestly, I don't even know what kind of writing you like in the first place. Yeah, me neither. Ugh. Why don't you at least try giving... It some thought. Aw, uh, you want to write something for me? That's so sweet. Yeah, right. But you're always thinking about other people. You need to think about yourself once in a while. If you don't, you might end up getting hurt at some point. Huh? Well, I don't really know what you mean, but I'll keep that, keep it in mind. Well, whatever. Anyway, let's see. Hmm. I guess I like happy poems. Wait, sometimes I like sad poems, too. Oh, she's so complex. She's so complex, even if it's a stereotype in some video games. Yeah, I know, right? That everyone seems to take advantage of. There's so many stereotypes in a lot of games, though, so... Sometimes it's a bit of both. There's a word for that, right? What's the word I'm looking for? Bittersweet. Yeah. I like things that are happy and things that are sad. Ha happy and sad? I can't see you liking something sad, Sayori. Well, I like happy the most. But sometimes when you have a little rain cloud, a sad poem can help give the little rain cloud a hug. And make a happy, nice happy rainbow. Did she just say give the little rain cloud a hug? Oh, God, yeah, I said make a happy rainbow. Isn't it? Yeah, pretty much. Sayori, oh, that's... God, that hurt. <laughs> She, she's the, the cinnamon roll, except she's not the cinnamon kind of cinnamon roll I like all that much. My favorite Ooh. cinnamon roll in a video game is probably Papyrus. I fucking <laughs> love Papyrus. Everybody loves Papyrus. I love Papyrus. He's my favorite. Especially in the game, he's like, um, I just have something in my eye. What do you have? Tears! <laughs> Sayori, that's unexpectedly poetic. Eh? It is? Maybe I'm getting better at expressing my feelings after all. Thanks, Tater. I should go write that down then. You can read my poem now, okay? Bottles. I pop off my scalp like a lid of a cookie jar. That's a terrifying image. Ugh. It's the secret place where I keep all my dreams. Little balls of sunshine all rubbing together like a bundle of kittens. 
I reach inside with my thumb and forefinger and pluck one out. It's warm and tingly, but there's no time to waste. I put it in a bottle to keep it safe. And I put the bottle on the shelf with all the other bottles. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts and bottles all in a row. My collection makes me lots of friends. Each bottle a starlight to make amends. Sometimes my friends feel a certain way. Down comes a bottle to save the day. Night after night, more dreams. Friend after friend, more bottles. Deeper and deeper my fingers go, like exploring a dark cave, discovering the secrets hiding in the nooks and crannies. Digging and digging, scraping and scraping. I blow dust off the bottle caps. It doesn't feel like time has elapsed. My empty shelf could use some more. My friends look through my locked front door. Finally, all done. I open up and I'll come in my friends. In they come in such a hurry. Do they want my bottles that much? I frantically pull them off the shelf one after another, holding them out to each and every friend, each and every bottle. But every time I let go, it shatters against the tile between my feet. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts and shards all over the floor. They were supposed to be for my friends, my friends who aren't smiling. They're all shouting, pleading, something. But all I hear is echo, 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 echo inside my head. Well, that started happy and got depressing, Sayori. It's like, yay, sunshine. Wait. That sounds... What the hell? I tried to make my friends happy with my happy thoughts, and now I don't have any more, and it's just breaking. That's called depression, Sayori. Holy crap. Yeah, that's that's called depression, sweetheart, and I think you've got it. Bad. Yeah. Sayori, did you really write this? Of course I did. Didn't I tell you yesterday I was going to write the best poem ever? Yeah, but... I mean, I didn't expect something like this coming from you. Monica taught me a whole lot. And I've been really in touch with my feelings recently. I see that. It's almost kind of creepy. Creepy? Well, not exactly. Maybe because I'm so used to you being cheerful. Well, never mind. I'm thinking too hard about it. The point is... I'm Reaper from Overwatch, the ultimate oh edgelord. Oh my god. I, I like... I kind of like Reaper. Uh, I kind of like him now. Die, die, die. I do more Orisa, though. I haven't played Overwatch in ages. The point is, it came out good, so I'm proud of you. Aw, thanks. I feel like... I feel like I was meant to express myself this way. It even helps me understand my own feelings a little bit better. Writing is like magic. You have got pretty passionate about this, huh? I hope you keep it up. Yeah! I tried to say yay and yeah at the same time. Writing's the best! I'm gonna write until I die! <laughs> Don't get ahead of yourself. I'm um, judging how depressing this game is. Yeah, foreshadowing! Yeah, she. That time may come sooner than you think, Sayori. Sayori's always had a habit of getting obsessed with something before dropping it. No matter. No more than a week later, I can fucking read. I wonder if this is gonna be one of those times. But seeing the passion in her eyes makes it hard for me to be pessimistic. Okay, everyone. We're all done reading each other's poems, right? I have some extra. I have something extra planned today, so if everybody could come and sit in front of the room... Is this about the festival? Well, sort of. Ugh, do we really have to do something for the festival? It's not like we have to... Words, John. Words! WORDS! It's not like we can put together anything good in just a few days. We'll just end up embarrassing ourselves instead of getting any new members. More well, sound you... like chills. Number fifteen. Aren't you being pessimistic, you little ball of sunshine? That's a concern of mine as well. I like Yuri. I do too. I don't really do well with last minute preparations. I don't either. Don't worry so much. We're going to keep it simple, okay? We don't need much time, much more... Ugh. We won't need much more than a few decorations. Sayori has been working on posters, and I've designed some pamphlets that we can give out during the event. Okay, that's great and all. 
but that doesn't tell us what we're actually going to be doing for the event. There we go. Ah, sorry. I thought you heard about it already. We're going to be performing. Performing? Uh, what, bitch? Uh, if it Puh. involves singing, I ain't fucking singing, okay? Just puh. 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 Uh, uh, Monica? Yeah, we're going to be having a poetry performance. Each of us are going to choose a poem to recite during the event. But the cool part is, we're going to let anyone else come up and recite poems too. Sayori's putting in... Sayori's putting it all on the posters in case anyone wants to prepare ahead of time. <laughs> Sayori, who's been coloring a poster, holds it up for us to see. Are you kidding me, Monica? You didn't. You didn't already start putting these posters up, did you? Eh? Well, I did. Do you really think it's that bad of an idea? Well, no. It's not a bad idea. This is just something that you shouldn't spring on people all of a sudden. But I didn't sign up for this, you know. She obviously doesn't get paid enough for this. <laughs> F in chat for um, whatever that for Natsuki. Natsuki, yeah. There is no way I'm going to be performing in front of a group of people like that. Yeah, performance anxiety. <laughs> yeah, try singing in front of your mother and her friends. I also have performance anxiety, even though I've never performed in front of people. But being in front of people, I'm just like, no. I... I agree with Natsuki. I could never, in my life, do something like that. Imagining it, Yuri shakes her head in fear. Guys! No, Sayori, I understand where they're coming from. Remember that Natsuki and Yuri have never shared their poems with anyone until a couple days ago. It's a lot to ask of them to recite their poems out loud to a whole room full of people. I guess I kind of overlooked that. So You think? Yeah, I know. Jeez. So, I'm sorry. Why can't they recite a poem from, like, somebody else? Like, read a poem out of a book or something. That would probably at least cut down the, the tension. What... What sound... What side effect... I mean, what sound effect was I supposed to use there? Just, I... I don't know. I usually- I'm an asshole, and I usually just say dots. <laughs> dot, dot, dot. But, I still think we should give it our best. We're the only ones responsible for the- We're the one- I was right the first time. We're the only ones responsible for the fate of this club. If we start the event and put on a good perform- Each put on a good performance, then it'll inspire others to do the same. And the more people who perform, the better we'll be able to show everyone about the li what literature is all about. Yeah! It's about expressing your feelings. Being Ugh. intimate with yourself. Being intimate with yourself. Uh, My brain was like, are you that that's inappropriate, um, Sayori. Be, be intimate uh That's inappropriate, well. Sayori. Finding new horizons and having fun. That's right. And it's those reasons that we're all in this club today. Don't you want to share that with others? To inspire them? To inspire them to find the same feeling that brought you in here in the first place? I know you do. I know we all do. And if it'll and if all it takes is standing in front of a room for two minutes and reciting a poem, then I know you can do it. Bitch, most poems won't take up two minutes. At least most of the poems that I read don't even take thirty seconds. Yeah, I know. A lot of them are really Because I don't short. read poems. I can think of three poems, all written by Oscar Wilde, that'd probably take up that amount of time. Are you an Oscar Wilde fan, girl? Yes! I love Oscar Wilde, and I love him as a person, but he's been dead for almost 119 years. Wow. So yeah. <laughs> he died in 19 November 1900. Damn. Yeah, he's very dead. Dots. Dot, More dot, dots. Dot. Natsuki and Yuri remain silent. Sayori looks worried. I guess that leaves me no choice. I agree. I don't think it's too much to ask. 
I think that Sayori and Monica have been trying really hard to get new members. The least we can do is help out a little bit. Yeah, but you still don't spring this kind of shit on people at the last minute. That's rude! Well, maybe, but... Dots. Looks like Natsuki doesn't have any arguments left. Ooh. That's supposed to be ooh. Or uh. uh. No, uh. Okay, fine. I guess I'll just have to get it over with. Kind of like a trip to the dentist. Yeah, I know, right? All right! I fucking hate dentists. Yeah, I do. I'm not fond of them either, because I don't have great teeth. What about you, Yuri? Dots. Yuri dejectedly glances around at everyone's everyone else's expectant faces. Uh, Who actually says sigh? I no, oh, that's you. Sigh. I I guess I don't really have a choice. Damn right you don't anymore. <laughs> that's everyone. You're the best, Yuri. Well, you you kind of didn't even give us a choice. Yeah, you you kind of forced it. You you jumped on this. You jumped this on us at the last fucking second. You didn't even give us any time for prepare. You're just like, yeah, you have to do this thing. Fuck you! It's like, it's like, oh, you're waiting for this? Hmm. Surprise pop quiz. Fuck yourself. You're a bad <laughs> president, Monica. This club is seriously going to be the death of me. In more ways than one, apparently. Oh, gosh. You'll be fine, Yuri. But anyway, let's move on to the main event. I want each of you to choose a poem of yours. We're going to practice reciting them in front of each other. Oh no. I'm gonna have to read poetry, aren't I? I don't know. N no way. Monica. This is too sudden. Kind of like the entire fucking situation. Yeah, I know, Jesus. Well, if you can't recite your poem in front of the club, how do you expect to recite it in front of strangers? I would have been able to practice this if you hadn't sprung up, sprung this on me at the last fucking second, Monica! Don't worry, I'll start off to help everyone feel a bit more comfortable. Can I go next? <laughs> of course. Yeah. Now let's see. Monica flips through her notebook to a specific poem she has in mind for herself. Then she stands behind the podium. The title of this poem is The Way They Fly. Ahem. Monica begins to recite her poem. Her clear, confident voice fills the room. More than that, her inflection is pristine. That's because she's fucking perfect. Fucking yeah, stepper and wife. She knows exactly how to apply emotion behind each line she each line she recites, bringing the words to life. Is this something she'd done before, or is she simply a natural? I glance around me. Everyone has their eyes on Monica. Sayori looks amazed. Yuri has an intense expression on her face that I don't understand. Not gonna talk about what Natsuki looks like. Probably because we can't- we can only see the top of her head. Finally, Monica finishes the recitation. The four of us applaud. Monica takes a breath and smiles. That- that was so good, Monica! <laughs> Thank you very much. I was just hoping to set a good example. Are you ready to go next, Sayori? I, I'll go next. Oh fuck, I have to read, don't I? Well, Monica didn't read her poem, so probably not. Whoa! Yuri's all fired up all of a sudden! Yuri clutches a sheet of paper between her hands and stands up. Keeping her head down, she walks quickly over to the podium. This poem is called... Yuri anxiously glances at each of us. You can do it, Yuri! It's called After Image of a Crimson Eye. That actually sounds like a really good poem. Sounds either like a mystery thing or like some supernatural horror thing. Yuri's voice shakes when she starts reading the poem. Just a moment ago, she practically refused to do this. Why is she suddenly putting in so much effort? As because Yuri gets... of you, dumbass. Yeah, pretty much. As Yuri gets past the first couple of lines, her voice changes. It's almost like what happens when Yuri gets absorbed in her books. The quivering words transform into sharp syllables of a fierce and confident woman. The poem is full of twists and turns in its structure and that she enunciates in perfect timing. 
This is a rare glimpse into the whirling fire Yuri keeps concealed inside her head. Suddenly, she finished. Everyone is stunned. Yuri snaps back into reality and glances around her, as if she is bewildered even herself. I... It's up to me to save the situation. I'm the first to start applauding. Everyone joins me afterward and we give Yuri the recognition she deserves. It's not that we didn't want to applaud for her. We were just so caught off guard that we had forgo we have forgotten. We must have forgotten. As we applaud, Yuri holds the poem to her chest and rushes back into her seat. Yuri, that was really good. Thank you for sharing. Dots. Looks like Yuri is down for the count. Okay. I guess I'm next then. Sayori hops out of her chair and cheerfully walks up to the podium. This one's called My Meadow. Ah. <laughs> Sorry, I giggled. <laughs> Sayori. It's a lot harder Read than I thought. already. Yeah, I know, Jesus. It's a lot harder than I thought. That's what I she said. <laughs> you whore. <laughs> I'm not apologizing. How did you guys do it so easily? Ah. Try to not think... Try not to think of it like you're reciting it to other people. Imagine that you're reciting it to yourself, in front of a mirror, or in your own head. It's your poem, so it'll come out the best that way. I see, I see. Okay, then. Sayori begins her poem. Somehow it feels like her soft voice was made as a perfect match. The poem isn't aimlessly cheery like Sayori is. It's serene and bittersweet. If I were to read this on paper, I probably wouldn't think much of it. But hearing it come from Sayori's voice almost makes, almost gives it a whole new level of meaning. Maybe this is what Sayori meant when she said that she likes my poems. It's like I get to reach more deeply into somebody I thought I knew through and through. Sayori finishes and we applaud. I did it! Good job, Sayori. <laughs> Even Tater liked it. I guess that's a good sign. What does that mean? It came out nicely, Sayori. The atmosphere of the poem fits you really nicely. But it might be that the other poems won't work quite as well with that kind of delivery. Eh, yeah, I don't really understand. In other words, I've seen poems like yours where the sort of gentle delivery wouldn't work as well. They might need a little more force behind them depending on what you're reading. Oh, I know what you mean. That's, well, I've been practicing that kind of thing. It's just embarrassing to do it in front of everyone. <laughs> Understand what you mean? Do you really, Sayori? Do you really? <laughs> maybe, maybe not. Who the fuck knows? Most likely not. She's your stereotypical airhead. So most a little likely bit. not. The next time, I'm going to make you pick a poem that challenges you a little more. We don't have much time before the festival, you know? Yeah, thanks for that, Monica. Okay. Now who's next? Natsuki? Don't make me go before Tater Cat. Why? It's not like I can compare to you guys anyway. Sundari. She is a Sundari. And to think that's my favorite anime archetype. Anyway. I'm a Yandere person because I like the crazy. You're weird. Have you. You have no idea the kind of shit I read. And I want to keep it that way. <laughs> yeah, probably. It's better, probably better that way. Might as well let Tater Cat lower everyone's standards a little before I have to do it. Wow! Wow! Asshole. Thanks, Natsuki. I Natsuki. hope she dies. Yeah, I know. That was fucking rude. It's fine. It's fine. Might as well get this over with. It's not like I have much of a selection of what to read. Just have to go with what I wrote for today. I stand up in front of the podium. Everyone has their eyes on me, making me feel terribly awkward. I recite my poem. Since I'm not exactly confident in my own writing, it's hard to put energy into it. Despite that, once I finish, I receive applause anyway. So I am not really as good as everyone else. Don't worry so much about it. Don't worry so much. What the fuck did I read? Don't worry about it so much. Fuck, I hate when my brain does that. I think it's less about your abilities, and more about your lack of confidence in your writing. That's something that'll improve over time, though. Yeah, maybe. Alright then! That just leaves you, Natsuki. Y yeah. I'm going. 
Natsuki begrudgingly gets out of her seat and makes her way to the podium. The poem is called... Why are you all looking at me? Because you're giving a presentation. Because you're presenting. Yeah, exactly what Monica said. Hmm. Anyway, the poem is called Jump. Natsuki takes a breath. Once she starts reciting her poem, her sour attitude disappears a little. While she's still a little un unenthused, her poem has a rhyme and rhyme to it. It's Natsuki's trademark style, and it works surprisingly well when spoken aloud. The, the words feel like they bounce up and down, as if giving life to the poem. Natsuki finishes, and everyone applauds. She huffs and goes back to her seat. That wasn't so bad, was it? Easy for you to say. You better not make me do that again, even though I probably will. Have you seen multiple save files? Oh my god. <laughs> uh, well, do you at least feel prepared enough to recite a poem in front of other people? I mean, by doing it in front of other people will be way easier. Because I don't know those people. I can put on whatever face I want to other people. Maybe not resting, resting bitch face. Like I've seen that. Oh, bitch! She has no, she has no idea what resting bitch face is. Have you seen my face? Yes, and you do not have resting bitch face. I have a very hardcore case of resting bitch face. The thing is, <laughs> my little sister. Once you know it. me as a person, the resting bitch face disappears. That's the thing, though, is you know who who I am personally. You're just a big old goofball. Now you don't see the resting bitch face anymore, but everybody else still does. But when it's just my friends... It's just embarrassing. That's a surprise, Natsuki. I would think you'd be the other way... I think you'd be the other way around for me. Well, that's just how it is, so... Well, I guess in that case... You won't have much to worry about for the festival. That said, I want to thank everybody for coming through. It might be hard, uh, but I hope you all have an idea of what's it like now. What? Monica's kind at heart and kind and innocent. Demeanor is killing me. Monica's a bit too perfect for me. Make sure you pick a poem and get, uh, get enough practice before the festival, okay? I'll be making pamphlets, so let... So let me know ahead of time what you'll be reciting. Jeez. I should probably find some other poem to recite instead. That's fine too. It doesn't have to be your own. I'm already pleasantly surprised that you're putting in all of this effort for the club. Yeah, be able to read other people's poems. It'll help cut down on the fucking anxiety because they won't be judging you as much. It makes me really happy. Uh, yeah, no problem. Okay, everyone. I think it's about time- I think that's about it for today. I know the festival is coming up, but let's try to write poems for tomorrow as well. It's been working out really nicely so far, so I'd like to continue that. As for the festival, we'll finish- finish planning tomorrow and then we'll have the, the weekend for, to prepare. Wow, fucking words, Jesus. Monday's the big day. I can't wait! I can do this. I can do this. Alright. Stand up. There's no way I'll be able to find the same enthusiasm as Sayori or Monica, but I'll do my best to get through it. It's for the sake of the club, and impressing Monica. And I'll have to do my best. Ready to go? Oh, that wasn't Sayori. I saw the name Sayori and my brain, like, put it up here. Ready to go, Sayori? Yep! Look at you two, always going home together like that. No shit, hold on, use the wrong voice. Oh, look at you two, always going home like that. There you go. Oh, okay. It's kind of adorable, isn't it? <laughs> Jeez, guys, don't make such a big deal out of it. It's much... Yeah, words! Bah. It must be a little nice, though. Well, uh... How am I supposed to respond to that? It's okay, Tater. You don't have to say it. Whatever. Let's go already. Thanks for making it awkward, everybody. I walk home with Sayori once more. Even though it's only been a few days, a lot of things have already changed. 
But today Sayori is a bit quieter than usual on the way home. Hey, Sayori. Dots. Sorry, I was spacing out. Ah, no wonder. Um, I was thinking about something earlier. I like how we get to... I, I mean... Sayori fumbles with her words. So, let's just say that one day, Yuri asked to walk home with you. Huh? What would you do? What kind of question is that? You're kind of putting oh, me on the spot shit. here. <laughs> what would we do here? Would we walk with Yuri, or would we still walk home with Sayori? Hmm. I'm a little biased towards Yuri, so... Boop! Walking home with Yuri, huh? Why does that thought make my heart pound? I mean, given how hard it is for her to socialize, I would feel awful turning her down, so... Isn't she so beautiful and smart? That has nothing to do with what I just said. <laughs> you admitted it. Jeez. There's not even any point in speculating something that's never going to happen. Well, maybe. But I just like to think about it. It's not long before you won't need me anymore, you know? Need you? Sayori, I can't figure out how you're seeing things in your head right now. Sorry. Everyone is different. Nobody in the club is a replacement for you. Hmm. If you say so. The conversation trails off, and I'm felt leaving- felt- Left feeling awkward! Words! Yeah, sentences. But it was a kind of- but it was kind of her fault for trapping me with such a weird question. I just can't lie to her. But if there's something that makes her happy, I would hate to take it away from her. That's why I said there's no point in speculating. And again, the festival is only a few days away. Who knows what'll happen in that time? Stuff. Oh, it's poem time. You get to pick words. Hmm. Since Yuri's more of the disturbing kind. Let's go with grief. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> well, that was unexpected. Uh... Let's just go with Crimson. Let's just go with... Judgment. I had to see where that was. Imagination. I'm surprised that was her, actually. Uh, fuck it. Let's just go with it. Boop. Ah, oh, fuck. I got a not. I got a not so cute one. Uh, Papa. I guess. Marriage. Okay. Uh, secretive. Got to get that waifu. Hesitant. Heaven sent? Yeah. Okay. I heard hesitant and I was like, wait, that's not that's what I th That's what I thought it said. Because uh, if I chose Raven, then it's going to go straight for that other trick. Uh, tragedy. What the hell? <laughs> You're like, Sayori, what the fuck? I thought that was more Yuri stick. Uh, broken. What? <laughs> I like how confused you are. Uh, I have played over a thousand games in my time and I have never been this confused. Yay! Cheeks. Cheeks! No, oh, fuck. Uh, romance. I can I can feel that just like what the fuck you're you're having right now. I can feel it. No, I'm feeling really pissed off, so let's just go with anger. Oh come on! <laughs> uh, melancholy. Okay, she's more of the sad depressing type. Let's go with emptiness. 
You mean just empty? Yeah. Empty. Uh, excitement. I got real close to the mic to add that disturbing effect. Daydream, because I do that a lot. We're getting a lot of Sayori this time. I swear to God, if um, it's like, oh, you get the Yuri and you get the Sayori ending, beat me over the side of the head with a fucking stick. Please. Okay. Uh, memories. Suicide? Oh my God! No. Uh, Clearly. Graveyard. Kawaii! Fuck it, just go with it. Kawaii! What the fuck, Natsuki? Of course Ka Natsuki would do kawaii. I have to send you a weird thing later. Because I was reading a manga and I'm just like, this is. A it gave me a, a thought that I never thought I would think. It gave you a thought that you never thought you would think. Yes. Cater 2019. Yes. Great sentence. 